Uh, James, welcome back to the first press conference in a few weeks, mate. Um, talk us through the last, uh, you've been out for four, five weeks now. Talk us yeah. through like, the initial injury and then the, the follow up injury. Um, how's, it, how's it all sort of played out? Yeah, well, yeah, first things first, yeah, I'll be fit this week, obviously, got to get through selection, um, but yeah, we, we've got there in the end, it was uh, a little bit frustrating because I, I tore uh, my MCL against the All Blacks in that um, second test at Eden Park, and then probably something I've learned through this period is you just, you can't force things, um, so I tried pretty hard to get out for that uh, next game and then ended up uh, tearing a muscle in my foot, my plantar fascia, uh, just because I was a little bit off balance and... Um, yeah, yeah, I guess your body's pretty good at sort of catering to weaknesses and whatnot. So I spent the last few weeks just building that back up. I was in a boot for a while and just rebuilding the strength, but I'm in a position now where I feel I feel good and I feel I can I can do the job for for the team. And uh, yeah. Where are, where would you say your body's at at the moment? Is it 100 percent or still getting there? I don't think you ever really play at 100 uh, percent, but everything I we created a, a bit of a, a check. Checklist. Everything I've uh, I wanted to be able to do on the field, I've ticked off, and it's still there's still a week to go. So I'd say I, I will be very close to 100% come the weekend, if not 100. Would you say this is probably one of the most frustrating times in, in your uh, in your playing career, just having one after the other? Yeah, for sure. I think almost uh, I've I've been I wouldn't say lucky, but uh, being an, an older player now, you sort of you put a lot of work into your body off the field um, and just doing the little things right. And I guess I, I came into sort of this campaign and I was uh, given, a lot, given a lot of responsibility and um, I was very sort of happy with how it was sort of moving forward and how my game was progressing and how we were sort of growing as a team. So then to be sort of cut short and having to watch from the sidelines, it was uh, yeah, very tough. Okay, so where, where did you watch the, the, I guess, the loss in Sydney and then uh, the match in Brisbane? Like, did you watch it from the sideline or did you go up to the coach box? Did you trying to sort of break down where or where things went wrong or where things were yes. going well. So I was actually uh, marked up, I was running water. Right. So I was still involved in the process, um, giving visuals in terms of what sort of I was seeing. And it was actually a good growth period for me as well, sort of being able to um, contribute, but also hear sort of the messages that the coaches were passing and I guess working on that sort of communication element to how we can get the best messages on the field. And uh, yeah, it was, there was a lot of communication going on, which is yeah, really good to see. Space, finding space, playing the moments, territory, and areas of our game that we sort of need to improve on. Did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it, although I was hobbling. I don't know if you saw me out there. I think uh, the second game, well, the game in Brisbane, um, I sort of, I definitely knew something wrong, was wrong with my foot because at halftime I had to put my hand up and stop running water. I think Dave was, uh, yeah, give me a bit of shit. <laughs> Got stuck into me about that. First water boy that's uh, been pulled off the field, but um, no, it was yeah, it, yeah, it was good to just be able to stay connected and uh, still felt like I was involved in preparing the team and um, being a part of it. Yeah. Did make you think about you know what you maybe when you retire and do something like that? Water boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, official water boy. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. That um, those I guess those questions always sort of come up. I think probably the biggest thing for me was. Being able to watch from the side and almost reanalyze my games from the previous week on where sort of I went wrong and where I sort of maybe possibly could have um, alleviated more pressure and helped the team out in that respect and it's just yeah growing growing pairs for me like I've I've stated from the beginning like I, I picked up playing ten on the run at Super Rugby and I know by no means feel like my game is complete but I'm at the level where I'm really starting to see space in a different way now and hopefully I'm uh, putting guys like you away. <laughs> <laughs> with, uh, with you coming back, if you are selected at 10, Reese has obviously done a pretty good job in the last few weeks at, at 10. Would you like to see him outside you at 12 or where, where would you like to sort of see him fit in the 23? I think, yeah, Hodgie's done a great job steering the ship around and um, as you know, he plays in every position. Um, and I've had a lot of sort of communications with him while well, we normally are roomies as well, so that sort of helped a lot. Um, but yeah, I think he's definitely earned a spot to sort of stay there. I'm not a selector, so I, I won't be pretending that I where, where I'd put him. I've sort of had my ideas and we'll sort of see where that plays off. Um, but I think, yeah, he definitely deserves to be out on the field somewhere. And saying that as well, there's we've got pretty damaging centers that are doing a really good job for us and, and the back three as well. So where that fits in, I'm happy I don't have that uh, headache decision. What do you think of the number 101? 101? 101. That's, the, that's what the, to win. Oh, okay. Oh, that, 
that's the first I've heard of that too fair. Um, it's a big, big number, isn't it? It's huge. <laughs> Jordy, what would you think of having raised a 12 dollar hunt tonight? Um, oh, I haven't really thought about it too much, actually. Mm. Um, Do you yeah. feel like your combo with Hunter's sort of getting there, though? Hunter you seem to have really sort of gelled in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, me and Hunter, yeah, been building a really great um, center combination. So I think that's yeah been improving each week, and we got parts of our game that definitely needs improving. But I feel like yeah, together we've been growing quite a bit, and same with Hodgie at ten. Also, I guess he's been um, growing there and doing his thing. So yeah. James, do you think we the silverware almost certainly off the table this week? Do you think Dave might experiment because you guys haven't? had much run in the last couple of months a, a jersey this weekend? No, we're taking this game. This is a must-win game for us. Like, it's very important for our campaign and moving forward as a group. Um, we've spoken about it a lot. It's not just finishing the, like, the year in this way. It's almost springboarding us into this whole campaign. It's been a, a huge year for us almost with COVID, coming together, new coaches, new group. And I think one thing sort of we haven't spoken about it a lot is there has been huge growth um, off the field, on the field. I guess now it's just about transferring it um, to, I guess, those little margins and being able to tick the scoreboard over. But you just direct that question to Jordy. I've seen huge growth in him and Hunter, the way sort of they're developing and as well just communicating. Eh? Mm. It's been a, a, a big one for them is identifying space and they're both naturally gifted athletes and they can beat defenders one-on-one -on -one all the time. But uh, you know, as you become, I guess, a more senior player in the team, you want to keep improving your game and for them they've identified parts and I, I can see the growth there. Anything on line guys? Um, yeah James, oh. you, you go, I go. James, um, just back to Hodge you playing 10 when he, Sam said he's obviously done a pretty fair job there, got the win over the All Blacks in Brisbane, um, was very solid in the first half in Newcastle as well. Did you? Did you fear maybe you'd lost your spot when you saw Hodgie filling in so well in the 10 jersey? Well, yeah, you, you never want to give someone an opportunity in, um, in your spot, that's for sure. That's why I uh, pushed the rush back the um, the week earlier, uh, I guess with my injury. But in saying that, look, I, I have huge trust in whatever is meant to happen will happen as long as I do what's correct for myself and, and keep pushing forward and growing. So. Like I said, he, he has done a really good job, um, but I would still like to put my hand up and get that 10 jersey back. Uh, hey James, it's Mel Woods from AAP. Um, uh, Scott Wiseman was talking about, you know, what a mentor that you've been and your maturity in the team. And that. I just wondered, when you've been on the sidelines for the last couple of weeks, have you thought... Hard without the hard with the video on Mel. Maybe flick the video off and have another crack. I think. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. Um. Yeah, James. I was just going to say, Scott Wisemantle had talked about your growth and maturity, and I just wondered, like, given the time you've had on the sidelines, have you sort of taken Noah under your wing, and and sort of how have you seen him? You know, obviously, he didn't have the happiest start in Sydney, but. You know, he'd probably like to get some more game time, and I yeah, just wondered how he sort of handled the journey. Yeah, I said that from when I came back to Australian rugby. I know sort of where the future of the game is sort of going, and when it is like my time to step down, I will do that graciously. And I think there is guys there that are right there on my heels pushing, and um, Noah, Will Harrison as well. Like they're both special players in their own right, and they've both got a very sort of different game to each other. And I think they're going to be uh, very competitive going forward. And I think it's going to be really good for us rugby. But and with Noah, it was yeah, he did have a tough first game. But I think the it it was pretty tough for the whole group. And when you sort of when you're not moving forward, when you're versus an All Blacks team that is literally executing on point. It's going to be a hard night at the office and sort of I think he's found it's probably a good lesson early that he's found if you're not on top of your game then literally at test level the margins are so small but I was very impressed with the way he responded you know he got straight back into the saddle copped it 
literally pulled apart his game and was the first guy to sort of come to, I guess, some of the leadership, leader, leadership sort of group in the team and identify where he thinks we could sort of improve. And he took a lot of that on his shoulders. And as you've seen, he sort of bounced back the next week and he's been a really integral part of the group. Um, but yeah, in terms of sort of my progression, it was, I guess, yeah, it is a, it is a, it is a younger group and, and you can sort of see that was sort of the energy that we're bringing on the field. And like I, I spoke about before, it's just about now just transferring those little things to be able to tick that scoreboard over because there has been huge amounts of growth and I really want to finish this campaign the way sort of, well, with the energy that we've put into it, you know? And you talked about having a big finish, like that you guys sort of aren't handing out jerseys because it's the last test of the year. Um, I mean, the fact that you can finish with a better win-loss record than the All Blacks, it, it, you know, you don't have, might not have the trophy, but that must be some kind of achievement. Yeah, I've, I've sort of we've heard sort of whispers around the camp about that sort of stuff, but I guess the competition states, you know, bonus points is they're the guys that are going to win. So for us, it's. It is, yeah. It's not about handing out a jersey. It's about winning this game and taking forward what we've learned. Um, you know, Argentina have been a formidable foe. Like you saw, the beating the All Blacks, they drew with us. I really did feel we did enough in that game to close it out. But as you as you could see, they they know how to play the margins. They play territory really well, and they're a, a good a good group of men. They've been around the game for a long amount of time, and they've played. Lots of them have played throughout Europe and through the sort of Super Rugby campaign. So they've got a lot of knowledge about, I guess, how to play that game, how to win those sort of arm wrestles. So for us, we know what we need to do. We've got a good game plan we've created um, and we've got great buy-in. And when uh, you've got athletes like Geordie out, outside, you just want to get him the ball to do what he does, eh? And I just have one for Geordie. Um, you talk just about your partnership with Hunter. I mean, I guess you guys really only kind of got to know each other this year. Do you hang out that much sort of off the field? And, and I know it was like a long time before you might not even have been born when you know Horan and Little was such a great centre combination for the Reds. But you know, would you like to have that time together that you know you could eventually? I think we got what? the gist of that. Oh yeah. We to spend um, more time with Hunter. Yeah, no, nah, I mean Hunter spent quite a lot of time on and off the field together. Um, yeah, we actually um, we actually had played together last year uh, for West at twelve and thirteen. So. Um, yeah, I got a little bit of time in with him there and sort of knew him a bit last year around club footy because we're at the same club back in Brisbane. But um, nah, this definitely this year we've um, yeah we've grown that combination a lot more and um, just getting yeah uh, more and more comfortable with each other, which is which is great. Um, yeah, I think yeah we're making um, great strides in our game together and um, helping each other get better. So uh, I think it's been yeah really good for us in our footy. And this is Christy here, mate. Um, I'll just go on the back of that question around Hunter and, and Geordie. Um, you've played inside, outside you've, uh, with lots of different centre combinations. What, what the threat of Hunter and, and Geordie at 12 and 13, can that be a, a long-term partnership, you think, for Australian rugby? And is this one of the more potent ones that you've seen? Yeah, I actually had this conversation with Hunter at the start of the campaign. I think what... Him and Jordy bring the the best element is they complement each other. You know, um, they can both run short lines and outlines, but I guess, I guess the way, probably their their strengths literally, without going into it, giving sort of too much away of what how we want to create now uh, attack plan this week, it literally does complement each other. Um, they can play up and down straight. They can get in those wide channels. They can both hit, literally. There and I guess one of the other big things is they have a pretty good understanding of each other um, and sort of the lines that they're sort of manipulating defences with. Um, so for me, as a as a ten, it makes my job really easy because I can get those sort of comms early and literally know that they will create and I don't have to sort of come around the corner and try and manipulate just myself. These guys have their own ideas and they're literally um, finding each other on the field more often than not. As you saw with a couple of those little grubbers through, a couple of the short balls out the back. Um, they're gravitating towards each other. It's almost magnetic.